I don't know about anyone else, but I've just about had it with Team Cherry. Since the release of Hollow Knight in 2017, all of us as fellow gamers have done nothing but ask one question. So are we actually playing as the Pale King or aren't we? I mean, all the pieces are already there. The Knight is really just a reincarnation of the King, who's finally come back to end his long-lasting beef with the Moth God herself. It makes perfect sense. Actually, the real question is, where is the Hornet DLC? And what exactly will be the easiest way to inject its contents directly into our G-fueled veins? But they couldn't even answer that properly. They just decided that they'd give us an entirely brand new game, like there's some kind of AAA industry with unlimited funding through microtransactions. In all seriousness though, Hollow Knight Silksong is on the horizon, and even though the game looked pretty damn smooth at Australia PAX most recently, I'd say we've still got quite a bit of time before we're able to actually jump into the world of Farloon. And if you're anything like me, you probably beat the hell out of every single piece of content in the original game, and have been gnawing on your fingertips for any drop of additional news to suck the life out of. And while I admittedly have absolutely no solution to that problem, what I do have is a way to make the most of your time until Silksong's inevitable release. While we may not even have an official release date yet, we still actually know quite a lot about Silksong as a whole. With that in mind, we also have a general idea of what to expect and, more importantly, we know what particular skills we're going to have to hone in order to be ready to take on all Radiant bosses on day one of the game's release. Or maybe you'll just want to take the time to actually enjoy the game a bit before jumping into content that'll make you miss Radiant Grey Prince Zote for the first time, but I've got you covered either way. Oh yeah, and just in case it wasn't clear by now, we're about to discuss some serious spoilers for this game. And if you haven't played it yet, I promise you, save the money you were about to spend on V-Bucks and Atoms, because this game is worth four times its price tag. A lot of these points that I'm about to mention are designed to be taken on individually, but there's also the possibility of being able to do a few at once if you wish. And if you're a sucker for that kind of pain, or you've simply just been looking for a reason to play some Hollow Knight again, here are five things to do in Hollow Knight to prepare you for Silk Song. Number 5. Rerunning the White Palace and the Path of Pain Starting off the list is a return to the parkour and platforming that made a few of us burn through just a couple controllers. So get ready to rev up your buzz saws and waste four charm notches on High Flood. From all of the footage we've been able to see so far, in conjunction with what playtesters have already said about their hands-on experiences, Silk Song is apparently going to feel like the original Hollow Knight on steroids in terms of speed. The combat looks relatively similar, but people have been saying that the movement of Silk Song will take a little bit to break in and fully master. Hornet will have some new abilities to work with as well, such as being able to sprint and quickly zip from enemy to enemy, but she also has some returning features, like a Manus Claw lookalike and being able to do some short distance dashing. With that being said, it's entirely possible that Silk Song will have a pretty steadfast learning curve, even for the most seasoned veterans of Hollow Knight. Getting as used to the standard movement and platforming of Hollow Knight as possible will likely be our key to quickly becoming familiar with the movement of Silksong. Keep in mind though that parts of the White Palace and the entirety of the Path of Pain are actually cut off after you've completed them once in a playthrough. So for all of those with a craving to start up a fresh save, this might be the perfect option for you. The clips you're seeing now are actually from my Steel Soul run that I used to get the footage, and I'd be lying to you if I told you it was a thoroughly enjoyable time. But if you're feeling up for an additional layer of masochism, you could even try to clear these areas without taking any hits at all. Personally, I'll probably sit out on this idea. My hands cramp up way too quickly for me to partake in any kind of long-term platforming torture. Or at least that's what I'm going to tell myself to spare my own sanity. But hey, maybe I could live vicariously through others. If you give it a shot, make sure to drop a comment and reveal just how many bottles of Bengate you went through in the process. Number 4. Doing a No Upgrades Run This one's likely going to take a bit longer to do than other types of runs, but from my experience with playing through a couple pantheons with bindings, having no nail, shell, or soul upgrades forces you to play in a fundamentally different way than you otherwise would. The reasoning behind this activity is pretty straightforward. When Silksong launches, we're not going to have anything crazy to work with. 
We aren't even fully sure which exact abilities Hornet will be able to use at the start of the game, as we essentially have no real info over this matter apart from the Nintendo E3 footage. However, even this is subject to change between now and launch day, so it'd probably just be safest to assume that we'll be equally as handicapped as we were at the beginning of the original game. With that in mind, getting used to the idea of not just relying on quick slash and a maxed out nail to damage boost through bosses might be a good idea for all of us before we get our hands on Silk Song. Plus, there's just a lot more versatility with this type of playthrough regarding how hard you want it to be. You could choose to bar off all spells and abilities to do a streamlined run, you could use spells and charms but get no health and nail upgrades, or you could even bar yourself to a Godmaster style all bindings run to really drive yourself insane. Whatever type of challenge you're looking for. On a separate note entirely though, doing a no upgrades run might actually give you a different view of the game altogether. For example, while I did really enjoy the fight with the Hollow Knight at the end of the game, I didn't really spend a whole lot of time fighting him on my first save. I kinda just smacked him around and healed in between staggers with the fight ending pretty early. Going back through with no upgrades though, the fight was a totally separate experience. Every swing I took was with caution, and I had to rely on pogoing instead of double jumping. No shadow dash meant that my dodges were specifically limited to movement instead of defensive play. And most of all, no nail damage meant the fight was more drawn out. I actually got to experience every phase in the way that they were meant to be seen. Especially since I knew the lore of this boss, it was admittedly hard to not get choked up when I saw it being so weak that it just limps around at the very end in between bouts of stabbing itself. And I would have never seen this part of the fight unless I did this type of playthrough. So try keeping that in mind when you play Silk Song as well. Obviously in the heat of the moment we don't exactly feel compelled to watch animations and make already difficult fights drag on, but it's just nice to know the actual effort and detail that goes into the bosses of Hollow Knight. And I'm sure things like this will only improve in quality with Silk Song, so take it slow. Relax a little bit. There'll be plenty of opportunities to get our asses beaten along the way in Farloom, so it's probably best if we at least enjoy the scenery in the process. Number 3, A New Steel Soul Run. I've already touched upon this point a bit, but here's the full-on recognition of Steel Soul and all of the suffering that comes with it. If you've done this before, it just might be in your best interest to do a rerun to prepare for Silk Song. more on that in a bit. And if you've never done Steel Soul before, well, consider yourself lucky. It's definitely worth doing though, beating the entire game without dying may seem hard, but it's actually relatively straightforward once you know item locations and boss patterns. After that, the run just boils down to a matter of playing smart and knowing the best order of operations for your playthrough. Do you get mask upgrades first? Do you bother upgrading your nail to max? Do you make certain abilities a priority when starting out? Steel Soul forces you to think differently from conventional play, such that the way and timing with which you do things can severely impact your run. And with Silk Song having its own form of Steel Soul, currently known as Silk Soul, I'd heavily suggest giving this mode a try if you haven't already. All we really know about Silk Soul for the time being is that, well, it exists, and it will launch with the standard edition of Silk Song. On the Hollow Knight Silk Song details video uploaded by Team Cherry here on YouTube, Ari Gibson went ever so slightly into detail regarding Silk Soul mode. He compared it directly to Steel Soul mode and said this. So for Hollow Knight we had Steel Soul mode, which was largely a permadeath mode with some very small tweaks. And this and this time. Uh, we're, we're going to try and take that and just go a step further and mix it up a little bit and give you something that potentially uh, can last a little longer. We, we haven't... As to what this means, I have no clue whatsoever. The only thing I can really glean from this cryptic Team Cherry styled info drop is that it seems like Steel Soul cranked up to the max, which really just fills my soul with dread and bittersweet excitement. But in terms of speculation and implications to gameplay, I won't even try and touch it. Let's just leave that kind of dissection to Mossbag. Hornet is fucking void! Regardless, I think it's fair to say that we know Silk Soul will at least be similar to Steel Soul in nature, and in the amount of agony that awaits us. With that being said, there's no better time than the present to hop back into the world of Hallow Nest and rack up some more experience with permadeath. To all who would give this challenge another go before Silk Song's launch, I give you a poised Grim Troop bow and a celebratory grub dance because I'm just going to sit back and wait for Silk Soul rather than having my heart ripped out again for the sake of another video.
Number 2. Fully Completing the Hunter's Journal On my first playthrough of Hollow Knight, I was excited at the concept of a completed and fully fleshed out bestiary, but wasn't exactly sure if I'd put the time and energy into getting every single entry because of how much other content there was to complete within the game. And given that you don't even need all of the entries to satisfy the basement dwelling hunty guy and net yourself the hunter's mark, there's actually no particular incentive for completely filling out the journal at all. But the same rule mentioned before still applies. If you're willing to suck this game dry and lap up every drop of content in preparation for the sequel, then this just might be the time failure to hold you over. My reasoning behind this point is roughly twofold. One, Hornet herself has already been proven to be a hunter. It's mentioned in the original game and is relatively teased in Silksong with the addition of the new questing system. The descriptions of these quests seem to imply that Hornet's role throughout the game will be significantly different from that of the knight, as we will likely be able to actively engage in difficult hunts or tasks, given the nature of Hornet's capabilities. And I can all but guarantee that we'll have another bestiary to fill up somehow, so getting used to that idea prior to Silk Song's launch will likely come in handy. 2. There's actually a lot to be found in terms of lore and world building within the Hunter's Journal. Regardless of how well you know the game, there's always a possibility that an additional entry or item that you may not have known about might reveal itself. A lot of these entries aren't even tied to specific enemies, namely the entries found all over Godhome by doing multiple tasks with varying difficulties. For example, if you didn't know this before, there's a room to the very bottom right in the Hall of Gods that is locked, but opens itself up if you manage to beat all of the bosses on any given level respectively. A separate entry will be given for each difficulty, one for Attuned, Ascended, and Radiant, and each one comes with its own tidbits of lore. I had no idea about this and only got one entry for Radiant difficulty, since I was too busy wallowing in self-pity about beating Absolute Radiance and Markoth. So things like this are actually pretty easy to miss if you don't specifically know to seek them out. Plus, this point is also tied to the ever so slightly difficult task of redoing the Pantheon of Hallownest until all bindings are completed for that sweet, succulent, weathered mask entry. Personally, I haven't even gotten past the Pantheon of the Sage with all bindings yet, so I'll be working on that instead. And yes, you can do the Pantheon with one binding on at a time until you've gotten them all, but Mama White Lady didn't raise no bitch in my kingdom, so I'll take my ass whoopings in the form of singular runs with all bindings, thank you very much. And hey, if none of this was good enough to convince you to go for this undertaking so far, at least do it for Menderbug. I mean seriously, the kingdom's all but dead and the only thing he's worried about is repairing signs? That seems pretty scummy to me. He doesn't even try to offer the knight help either. I'm sure there's something in that toolbox that could have sped up the process of stopping the Radiance. Like a pure hammer to match our pure nail, or a can of raid or something. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I'm under your sign-fixing scheme, you little bitch. And you can't fly away from the truth this time. Number 1. Tying up some loose ends and finishing up the map. For this last point, I wanted to focus on something a bit more integral to the overall core gameplay themes of Hollow Knight as a franchise. Throughout its history, this game has undergone many systemic changes and additions to make it what it is today. From its Kickstarter content, to changing engines, to all of the supplemental content packs added post-launch, Hollow Knight is a game that keeps on giving with how much there is to see, do, or explore within the Kingdom of Hallownest. And the reason I bring this up as a point is because Team Cherry are pretty heavily equipped with knowledge and technology to make Silksong even more vast and rich with content. They no longer have to worry as much about things like writing code and overall gameplay design because the foundation of Hollow Knight has already been set. With Silksong, they are using the tools and knowledge that has already been amassed to create a brand new world with its own secrets, challenges, and story. 
On top of this, Team Cherry has already stated that Silk Song won't be launched until it, quote, matches the quality and scale of Hollow Knight, end quote. If this includes the game with all of the content packs, then oh boy. We are sure in for a dense treat of new lore, enemies, friends, gameplay enhancements, and buzzsaws to brighten up our lives. And with that in mind, I think it's safe to say that a lot of the way Silk Song is set up will mechanically stick with its roots in Hollow Knight. In other words, the more we are able to explore and find secrets in Hollow Nest, the better off we'll be when trying to uncover all of the breakable walls and hidden lore in Farloom as well. But more importantly, while I was running back through the game on my own time to see what I've personally missed, I'd be lying if I said I didn't find anything worth my time or wasn't recaptured by the magic of Hollow Nest. It's very few and far between that a game like Hollow Knight makes its debut and automatically captures the hearts and souls of most people that play it. And it's essentially impossible for us to recapture the magic of stepping into Green Path for the first time, or taking our first glance at the Hollow Knight statue in the City of Tears. But by checking every single nook and cranny that might have been looked over in the past, it's entirely plausible that you might discover something which you didn't even know about, or have yet to personally experience. I stepped into the Pleasure House for the first time while making this video, and just ended up sitting next to Marissa while she sang for far longer than I'd like to admit. Even now, this game still has secrets and places that can make you get a glimpse at what playing this game for the first time was like, no matter how small or quick these moments of new discoveries may be. So go ahead. Jump back into your most played save file and see what you can find. At the very least, you might even have some fun just rewalking the old roads that you've journeyed down before, but with no particular objective this time. It's kind of relaxing, in its own way. And that's about all I have for this list. If you had the mental fortitude to listen to me drone on about this little indie game, I'd like to seriously thank you for making it this far. I've never had a game that's touched the very top and bottom of my heart quite like this game has. So having the chance to share the magic of Hollow Knight with others just puts a smile on my face. Also, I believe this is the part of the video where I tell you to commit domestic abuse on that sub button and bell icon for more content like this if you enjoyed the video, but I'll leave that decision up to you. Here's to what's in store for us in the future, and I look forward to us all jumping into the world of Farloom with Silks on. Unless you're an Xbox peasant like me, then you better get used to avoiding internet spoilers, because we'll be waiting twice the amount of time at least. God damn it.